どちらum <clears throat> i'm navin lekpali like you said i lead the intelligent automation platforms in the company uh enterprise wide uh, that includes rpa process intelligence uh, and several other platforms um one of the thing that we have done as a company in automation is that we started this journey like 5 6 years ago um we took the baby steps where first we had to explain what the technology is the rules based uh, automation that what uh, the platforms to offer uh we graduated from there to a centralized coe model then we graduated to stop simplify and automate that was the mantra in the company for quite some time uh where we do not wanted to did not want to automate something that need not be automated or will not uh, sustain the long term uh, uh gains that we were trying to uh, expect out of it um and with the advent of ai and technology uh, we are really looking at end to end automations right now where we can look at the business process from the start till the end and figure out what technology fits in where and how can we go and solve the business problems ultimately generating the value uh, that our customers desire and ultimately amgen delivering what it does uh, the drugs that the patients that need um, which in most cases are very serious illnesses that we target for so we are happy that we are able to contribute in meaningful way to the mission that amgen is serving that every patient every time so yeah so marisa you've been on a couple of times now i think you were on in 2021 which is one one of the first shows we did you know actually the whole way back to 2019 yeah that was the first time but i was going to say one of the first shows we did coming out of covid oh yeah uh, and we talked about like the game of thrones game of bots <laughs> and but at the time we were still in that world it's funny daniel i don't know if you saw his keynote yesterday he talked about You know some of the things we got wrong he was very humble he said we we had the vision of a robot for every person yeah uh, and he said you know really we didn't quite envision the agentic age coming but we still feel like you know that automation for every person is very important but you guys bought into that but i think it was 2018 you sort of started your journey yeah um but now it's evolving so i'm curious as to what you uh, you know how how that resonated with you when daniel said that and you know where you are in act 2 you know and first off fabulous memory dave i got to tell you that that's spot on all, all the data points we've really just keep doubling down on that journey so i will agree with daniel like we're in act 2 where you have ai now gen ai agentic automation this is really that next evolution that we need to get to but we continue to really focus on how do we lead by example so we ourselves continue to empower operations team to be able to do automation and what I call digital productivity because that's encompassing everything we're trying to do on this journey to drive real outcomes not only for how we work ourselves but also how we partner with folks like Amgen being able to work with them on you know what is next we've been able to help on like how do we evolve these programs because the thing is that Daniel mentioned yesterday too is automation is hard there is a lot of yeah. work to be done on this there is the people element there is how do you evolve the governance of these programs how do you think about reusable so that you can really streamline how we also deliver this and then ultimately how do you keep tying it back to outcomes to deliver for strategy to be able to make sure we help these companies achieve what they're going out to look for in it so i think first off i agree with them i think this next wave is exciting or act 2 is very exciting and i think there's just so much more to come as we think about how we take automation ai agentic and really maximize what we're going to get out of this the potential and it sets up the fully automated enterprise which is what i mean this is a we've been waiting for this day for years we're going to have to wait some more time for yes. fully automated <laughs> enterprise but that is the the direction that you're going Ex explain that north star to the audience um 
fully automated enterprise has been a vision, uh, but did we have the right technology in place and available in the hands of customers like us? It wasn't, but with the uh, advancement of uh, AI and everything, so we are finding those missing pieces and all the technology improvements that each of the product vendors are bringing in are really helping us step towards that vision, right? Ultimately, it's a destination that we want to get to, but there is a lot of things, uh, the missing puzzles that we are trying to put together. Things that were announced uh, in the conference this week were pretty exciting, but being a regulated company, it is very hard for us uh, to immediately jump onto technology, rather we take those steps and understanding the architecture, the security frameworks, uh, the compliance aspects of it, so that we understand that fully before we adopt the technology. So we are meaning to, we're excited about uh, what the future is for us and hoping that we can use these technologies to realize the vision for the enterprise. And you know, there was, um, it's interesting. So it sounds like technology is not the barrier anymore. I'm interested in what is, but it reminds me of Eliza. Eliza was something that IBM introduced, I think in the 1960s. It's, you look it up on Wikipedia. And what it was was a natural language interface to a mainframe that did pattern matching and was very much like an early version of today's LLMs. The point is though, the technology just wasn't ready to scale and just, but it was a really interesting experiment. People thought it was magic at the time. Now the technology's here or almost here. It's sort of, we can see the light at the end of the tunnel. So what are the blockers now um, that, are, that are holding organizations back generally, not just specifically Amgen? Um, in general, um, Specifics to engine, we are highly regulated. So we have deep processes built in. Mm -hmm. So for example, if I have to do some kind of AI project, there is a governance framework that we have established. One, to evaluate the technology, to evaluate the processes uh, and how the technology is going to be used in the company. Um, so that is really um, something that we had to put in place so that the right use of technology happens in the company and we are not um, uh, leaking data outside and, and um, uh, to, to the bad actors uh, anywhere in the, in the world. So that is one thing that we are very careful that we try to go slow. Uh, the, but the second thing is what this technology has enabled us to do the fast experimentation. So previously for, for us to try out something, prove out something, it used to take months and sometimes years to figure out what, how to build it. And sometimes we are building the building blocks itself. But now the building blocks are available, which is allowing us to do those fast experiments. In that way we can prove fast or fail fast and figure out our next chart on figuring out what the right solution could be. So that has really helped us. Yeah. I want to follow up, Marissa, with, with so Naveen said, go slow. I think you really mean, because you then you said fail fast. So you <laughs> I think by go slow, you mean be cautious. Be cautious. So go, go fast, but don't break things. It's sort of the new mantra. You know, Mark Zuckerberg, mm -hmm. yeah. fast and break things. Don't break things anymore. I wonder what, what you're seeing with, you know, across any patterns across the, your client base of what some of the blockers are, how much technology is, is a blocker versus people and process and how that yeah. equation is shifting. So I think on the technology front, there is a lot out there. There are a lot of different players come in the space. There's a lot of tools. There's, so it's figure out how to navigate that and also what actually fits in their ecosystem is one area that there's a lot of help needed on. And folks are even saying, look, we bought all these tools. We we have a lot we're using. They're not utilizing everything. How many come back, rationalize, think about, do I have what I need today? But more importantly, do I have the right tools for tomorrow? So that's one question. But I think the second piece is around how does the process get evolved? It's very easy to go and tackle a few more task oriented issues in a process, but ultimately if you really want the benefit of automation and even more importantly AI, we have to think about how is work going to change and evolve. And with that brings the last element, which I actually think is the one that is the toughest, is how to bring the people along the journey. And that's one thing that we really spent a lot of time with clients on is, you know, how do you break down barriers? How do you bring business and technology closer together and converge those relationships so that you're aligned? And it's actually one thing I think Amgen has done really well. Naveen and team, they just continue to think about how are all those different personas? How do you help them train? How do you help them learn? And how do you, doesn't mean everyone has to be involved in building, but how does everyone get involved along the journey? So so they reap the benefits and also help transform how work is going to be done in the future. So let's tease out some of those best practices because as you said, the people part is often the most challenging. So it sounds, get, get, get everyone involved in the process, make sure that everyone feels they have a stake in this. Um, the ability to, to experiment and, and not be punished if there's a mistakes made or things, the things don't work out as planned. What are some other key uh, best practices that have emerged in terms of getting everyone on board, as Marisa said? 
Um, I would say when when we are thinking about the process, think end to end mm -hmm. uh, in a sense, and think about the design patterns. Um, there could be several design and architectural patterns that can think of. Um, and always try to figure out whether there is value in doing something or not. Uh, if there is, the value could be in the dollar savings, it could be productivity, it could be compliance, it could be security, it could be various different things, but understand the value, prioritize all those things. And uh, once you have done that, then think about the way you want to deploy the technologies going forward, is it a big bang versus an incremental, right? I think uh, there is a balance that you need to maintain when you're going with very advanced technologies, incremental works very well. RPA as a bread and butter technology has matured so much that you, you can think about a big bang of an entire process or a sub process itself. So some of these are actually really helping uh, the overall solution thinking and it's also the mindset that has to change. So for example, uh, like Marissa mentioned, uh, we do a lot of engagement with, the, uh, with our uh, larger user base so that we tell them what the technology is, what it offers, when to use it, when not to use it, and how to use it. And what is the path for you to get onto this technology, learn about it, contribute to it. So when you have the automation first mindset, the opportunities that you bring to the central team also are also thought through in that way that yes, this is something that can be automated or something that can be looked at from an automation perspective. So, One other thing, if I can just yeah, add, please. and I think you guys have done really well is how you're communicating your outcomes and your metrics. You just have this lovely way of doing like real time uh, value and drivers through dashboards. And I don't know if you want to expand a little more on the but I just think that's such a best practice yep. is being able to, because you're not only communicating, you're showing and you're just, you're making it available to everyone to know what the team is doing and what kind of impact they're driving and reminding yeah. why reminding everyone of why we're doing this yeah exactly great point and uh, what we do is like i said uh, we have set up an intake mechanism where we capture the projected value at the start and when we build whatever kind of automation that we are building, ultimately we try to capture the real state, what it is actually delivering. And then we put it on the dashboard. The, the idea behind that is not only show, to show what the value the program is generating, but to actually get people excited that this kind of technology can generate this amount of value in, in a sense, right? So getting that insights in front of them has uh, really helped them to actually adopt the program, come join us. Uh, join us in the transformation. And many of the transformation projects that we do, automation as a mindset has been inculcated just because we track the value and the metrics so well uh, that everyone wants to do it in some shape or form in their own programs itself. So. You know, when you um, when you golf with friends, you get a, two mulligans, one on the front nine, one on the back nine. I don't know if you golf, I don't really golf well. But if you had two mulligans, and you could do something over, what two things would you sort of revisit and maybe do over again, e each of you, in your journey? Um, two things that I would definitely want to think about is when we started our journey, it was all about let's go automate, automate, automate. Uh, to the middle of the journey, we understood that that is not the philosophy, maybe the right philosophy. So we did a slight change and stop, simplify, and automate. I think that's a mantra that's ticked on and it is continuing and I want to recommend to everyone. So don't go just try to automate anything and everything. Rather look at the process. If you can simplify it, go ahead and simplify it first and then try to automate it. And uh, when you're automating it, also look ahead in terms of how long is the automation going to sustain? Are there any technology changes happening in the ecosystem that will make the automation redundant? So having those questions up front sometimes really helps what you're building, the value is delivered and it is a sustained value rather than just a value delivered for once and gone over. So. Anything you'd add, Marisa? So I would do a couple things. Um, I actually ran an automation program, but you know, also what I see with clients. I think one is don't forget to put in a governance model. It's very easy to jump in, dive in, get excited, try to start running. But if you're going to start getting to scale at some point, you're going to have to be able to run it. And also make sure that model is flexible. So it's not just about automation, right? This is automation, this is a Gentic AI, this is Gen AI, and it's gonna to continue to evolve. And that model needs to be able to evolve with the just technology landscape, but also with the company's needs. And then I think the other one is kind of tying back to some of this outcome management. Make sure upfront you are tracking, what are people working on? What is that value you're driving back to the organization? 
everyone's going to want to know that. At the end of the day, everything we're doing here is about helping companies achieve their strategy, moving them forward, achieving value for themselves, for their clients. And if you aren't able to demonstrate that, it's going to become a harder conversation. Even if you can feel it, everyone wants to show, show the meat behind it. Show me, the, don't show me quote, right? And I think that's one that's easy to forget. It's really hard to go back and do later because uh, now you're having to establish it. You're trying to go back and figure out what were those numbers. So I would say those are two things that if I were telling someone as they're starting this or even maybe just doing a reevaluation, if you've been a longstanding program, everyone's going to reevaluate at some point to say, how do I move forward? Those are two things I would definitely take a look at is the flexibility, adaptability of your program and making sure you're demonstrating that value and have a way to do so. So as automation experts, you're sort of by association process experts too. You have a lot of visibility on process and irrespective of what you think about is politics, e Elon Musk has this concept of delete, delete, delete. And the whole, if you're not familiar with the concept, it's, you know, when you think about how to do something or build a product, take out is more than you think you need to be, because if you're not putting stuff back in, you haven't deleted enough. So he's got this delete, delete, delete mantra. My question is, as you go through automations, do you find that you're doing a lot of deleting of steps or are you finding that there's gaps and you actually have to add stuff? Is there any insight that you can share there? Sure. So when you're automating it, so many a times when we start the journey, it's, it's always like you look at a small process, go automate it and say, okay, it is done, right? But many a times that is not what the customer wanted or the users wanted. They wanted to have, see a much bigger picture, much better automation. They want to have an UI in front of it. They want to have the human machine interaction in it. So all that was important and we wanted to build that, but we did not have the right tools at the time. But we also look at the partners and also the product vendors like UiPath and bring some of those questions back to them and give them the feedback saying that, hey, can you bring it into the product or you can you simplify this aspect of the product that will help us actually accelerate the adoption or accelerate a better technical solution that we can get to the end users. Ultimately, it's all about partnership and how we can figure out the right balance that the product vendors offers us, what we can bring to the table, what partners like Cognizant can bring some accelerators to the table is to figure out the right solution. In my opinion, there isn't a right answer on what should be, should not be. It uh, depends on who needs what and what time. Uh, but, but are the features good enough to be used and are the features good enough that they can scale are two things, uh, in, in my opinion, that is important. So it's hard to believe that 2024 is almost over, but looking ahead to next year, what are some of your key automation goals and, and how are you thinking about your digital transformation? Um, it would not be nice if I don't use the word agentic, uh, this being the theme. <laughs> it's the word, yeah, exactly. it's um, the word When I've been uh, listening to some uh, keynote talks in the morning from Forrester and others, I think, I think the vision is there. Uh, some of the companies have the broad vision on how to go about and solve it. We would have to wait and see and get our hands on the technology because ultimately we as company, we want to adopt such fine grain technology that we can stitch the end-to-end -end process in much beautiful seamless manner. Um, but does the technology is ready today? Will it be ready in six months? So I'm looking forward next six months to an year to get hands on the technology and figure out how I can integrate it into my workflows, into my company, go through uh, the processes that I need to go through and make sure that the technology is compliant and reliable and secure and so that I can scale and deliver better business value and outcomes to my customers and end users. Excellent, excellent. So if I'm thinking 2025 and maybe even a little beyond, I think there's a couple of things. There is of course AI, Agentic, all of that's coming into play, but I think really important one is how do we integrate that technology together? Because all of this has to play nicely in these organizations and it has to do so in a way that does make sure there's compliance, that there is risk addressed and controls in place, but ultimately also that we do drive to value at the end of the day. I think the second piece that we're looking at is, you know, how do we continue to bridge that gap between business and technology? So we continue to think about how do we not just enable, but how are we catalysts within these organizations? Because when we do that, we're not talking just an ROI, we're talking multifold returns. 
So I think that's one we at least keep trying to double down those efforts on. And then for us, the last one I think is around how do we help create solutions as accelerators that are not just POCs, are not just these small implementations, but really how do we move to production grade and enterprise solutioning? Because that's where everybody wants to get to. That's, that's when you achieve the promise of what we're talking about. So for us, that's where we're investing our, our time, our effort, our money to make sure that we're ready to help our clients get there and not just get there, but get there fast and reap those benefits. Excellent. Well, Marisa and Naveen, thank you both so much for coming on the Cube. Thanks, really, guys. really interesting thank conversation. You thank you so much thank for having you. us. I'm Rebecca Knight for Dave Vellante. Stay tuned for more of the Cube's live coverage of UI Path Forward 2024. You're watching the Cube, the leader in enterprise tech news and analysis.